Welcome, I'm David Geiger. Avian influenza continues to spread across the country and African swine fever is still a threat. Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack highlighted his department's efforts in combating animal disease, says the goal is to make sure ASF does not hit the mainland. So far, a protective zone is set up in Puerto Rico, and he's working with the Dominican Republic and Haitian officials to set up protections there. As for bird flu, 29 states have dealt with or are dealing with the disease, infecting around 240 flocks. Vilsack says this shows the need for surveillance. We have 585 folks between uh, the federal and state uh, efforts here uh, focused on this on a daily basis. Uh, we're concerned, obviously, about rapid spread, and that's why we have encouraged producers to be very cautious and very careful about biosecurity. The latest Water Resources Bill passed through committee. The Water Resources Development Act of 2022 passed unanimously through the Environment and Public Works Committee. The biennial bill gets dollars to the nation's ports, inland waterways, locks, dams, flood protection, and ecosystem restoration. This year, a proposal would adjust the inland waterway cost share to 75% general revenue and 25% through the trust fund, as well as get rid of sunset provisions. The U.S. still has billions of dollars worth of backlog for an aging infrastructure. Beef exports set another record in March. According to the U.S. Meat Export Federation, beef exports totaled 126,000 metric tons, a percent higher than last year and the third largest on record. But value climbed 33 percent higher to a billion seventy million dollars. First quarter exports were 6 percent higher than last year. In hogs, exports were the largest so far this year, but well below record large totals from last year. March pork exports are at 222,000 metric tons, 25% below last March, with pork export value at $615 million. And starting off the week with the markets down a little, our analyst Jamie Kwaki has more. Starting the week off with the markets, it's pretty much a bloodbath everywhere. Uh, Dow futures down over $500 is higher again. And that kind of risk-off type trade is spilled over into the ags as well. The trade is kind of anticipating a little bit of bullish report there, but it's just a broad base get me out type trade. Similar thing going on with beans. Uh, funds did take roughly off about 10 to 11 percent of their long positions last week as they were kind of getting nervous of better weather conditions this week. Other than that, we're just trying to hold some technical numbers uh, here today, the $7 corn. Uh, cattle, look for the market to remain firm this week. Look for cash to remain steady. Hopefully, we can start to see a jump in the box beef with uh, better weather conditions uh, here uh, this week and see some better movement. Over to hogs, another bloodbath here today. Market is very, very sluggish, very, very tired. Um, we've, I think, pretty much exhausted, uh, you know, all this small spec money out of the market. We're just waiting to see here today if we can hold the 200-day moving average. Very, very pivotal uh, technical line that we have to hold. The Colfax Sheep and Goat Auction on Saturday saw a sale of 441 head of sheep. Feeder lambs fetched the day's average price of $3.22 per pound, while fed lambs averaged $2.58 per pound. There were 98 head of goats at the auction, which saw a high average price ranging from $150 to $580 per head. That's all I have for the Agribusiness Report today. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time. We have our stories online. Head over to who13.com, click News, and then Agribusiness.